Hello, Jose here. It's Monday. I know we normally send videos on Wednesday and we will this week, but I wanted to start uh, the week with a special message in light of our headlines and all that's happening in our world. We all mourn uh, the killing of George Floyd and, and we wonder what do we do next? Now, I didn't mention in yesterday's teaching because it was, it was recorded before the events had happened. Uh, just for, to help our tech team, we record our Sunday messages a week or two in advance. So don't take it as some sort of statement of, of trying to avoid the issues at hand. The fact is we all know that racism is real and we're seeing it and an explosion against it even over the last few weeks. And where do we go and what do we do as a church? I am not gonna give pat answers to complicated questions. Uh, racism is something I've experienced firsthand. This may be brand new to you, but being a Hispanic growing up in New York City, it's something me and my family and my brother still living in Europe right now is experiencing all the time. Now, if this is not your story, you may be wondering why is everyone getting so frustrated by it? Well, this is the time for us to listen. Four things I'm inviting you to do as a church, as an individual, let's, let's take positive steps forward. The first is the most important. We need to be the people of prayer. Please pray. And don't just pray for the others or pray that others will figure it out. We need to start with our own lives. We need to ask God, God, search my heart. What's going on within me? What tendencies do I have that I'm not aware of? What blind spots do I have? We ought to model our relationship with God to a world that's just going to more yelling and more noise and more violence. We are the people who know the living God. And when we pray, let's just not throw up some hope. Let's have believing prayer that as God hears the cries of his people for justice and for mercy, that we will see this solutions finally happen, even in our day. The second thing I think we ought to do is we ought to peacefully promote. Uh, you may be able to go and be a part of live gatherings to stand up for what's right. Uh, for many of us, that's not possible. Uh, we all have our own forum. Uh, please, let's not point the finger. I think it's really discouraging when we point the finger and saying, why aren't you doing this? And why aren't you doing that? Uh, we don't know someone else's story. We don't know what's going on. Frankly, I've had a couple of people accuse me over the weekend, why aren't you being more vocal, not realizing they are talking to someone who's experienced it firsthand. And so let's be a people of peace. Now we can promote what's right and good as you stumble upon helpful resources, as you read things that are in line with the way of Jesus and could offer solutions and answers to, to the trouble amongst races or the trouble in our city today, please promote those. Let's talk about it. We don't need to shrink back and hide, but we are the people of peace. And so remember, while we do represent truth, we represent the person, Jesus. And so whenever we respond, we ought to do it in a way that is in light and in line with his heart. So there's no, there's no room to, to answer back in anger and in more violence. And so let's, let's peacefully promote. The third thing is let's find, and each of us is gonna find, have to find our own way. Let's find programs that are gonna bring understanding. There may be a resource or a ministry or an organization that is helpful uh, to bring light to your understanding of what's going on and, and how you can take steps forward. I think when we're looking for solutions, we wanna usually offer our own. Rather, let's go to places where we can listen and learn. Maybe there's some people that you know and you don't know their story. Now's the time to learn from them. How can we learn? How can we listen? How can we serve? There are already organizations working for peace amongst races in our area. Do you know them and what can you do to be involved? How can you inform yourself? This is something that we could take personal ownership Again, we're all in a different place, so we're all gonna be looking to other specific resources, and that's okay. Let's not judge one another. Let's just take action that's appropriate. And finally, and this is the hard one, uh, in order to, to have systemic change, there has to be policy change. Some of the biggest root causes of what's going on are beyond any one individual human, right? And so we can be a part of the change, but we have to recognize that we can be active in certain programs to help a few people and learn and serve. But some of the larger institutional things that are promoting injustice, what we ought to do is do our part 
right, as responsible residents. We, are, we live here, we go to school here, we work here, we can do our part, and we could also find out some policy changes that ought to be enacted and work peaceably towards that. That's the long-term game. But you know what? This isn't gonna uh, be solved in a week because it didn't start in a week. And so this week I'm asking us to pray. Uh, and next Sunday we'll continue our series on the way of Jesus, looking at forgiveness. And then the following weekend on reconciliation. But uh, do your part today and encourage your brothers and sisters to do their part as well. We love you deeply. And we want this to be a week marked by Jesus's peace.